Howdy y'all, Fast Force 289, welcome back. In this video, we'll be working on my 1976 Ford truck and I got something that's really old school and cool that I wanna install and just share with you because it's something you don't see anymore and I think it's just cool. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so this is what I wanna install my 76 Ford truck. This is a old school, like 1970s hydraulic electronic brake controller. It's actuated hydraulically by the brake mesh cylinder, but of course, obviously it's electric to go to the trailer brakes. It's, I had this in my previous truck, a 1971 Ford truck. That's why it's already somewhat kind of pre-assembled here. So you have these relays here. And the reason for this is some people like to use fuses. I don't because if something was to happen, let's say, right? And a fuse blew. Well, now if you're coming up on a situation, you lost all your trailer brakes. You have none now. Uh, you obviously don't want to wire it just straight in because if something happens, then you can fry your wiring, but you don't want to lose your brakes altogether either. With this, it's a resettable breaker. If something happens, it trips the breaker. And I think, if I remember correctly, I want to say these are 10 second breakers, I think. But uh, I want to say they're 10 seconds. So in 10 seconds, they'll reset. And then you have brakes again. So it's not just a complete total loss. You need a good thick wire for this. Uh, I want to say this is 10 gauge wire here and then the rest of this is just pretty, you know, whatever. The reason why this has to be so thick is this is your charge wire. On the 7 pin plug you have a charge wire, then you have your brake wire. This is your brake wire here and this is your charge wire. This is coming, if you notice, all the way from the battery and I'll show you all this once you got it hooked up. But to give a quick rundown, this, this wire here goes all the way from the battery all the way to the 7 pin plug and that's a charge wire for if you have a generator, a a uh, winch or whatever it keeps your battery maintained back there at the back where your winch would be or whatever and then of course you know it just mounts in here like that and then you have your brake line will go in here and hook to the master cylinder this wire i'm not going to be utilizing because i just don't care this is for if you actuate this manually without hitting your brakes it will turn your brake lights on i don't care because usually when i'm doing this i'm on the brake anyway so i'm not worrying about that um, and then the rest of this is, I'll just show you, it's, it's self-explanatory. Like I said, this right here is your, your brake wire. And, and these wires are labeled too. If you look on these old units, unless somebody's cut them so short, you can't read them. But like, see it's upside down, but it says brake. And then your other wire here, somewhere here it would say charge or battery. And see it says battery. So it's labeled, it's self-explanatory, and we're gonna jump into it and go ahead and, and get this mounted underneath the dash to start running wires. Okay, so where I wanna mount mine is right here underneath the dash. And what I'm gonna do actually, because of the way that mount is utilized on that controller, the mount doesn't go flush to the dash. It kinda, it's got a gap between the controller and the dash, and it's almost this exact amount of space here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize this one screw here screw one side in on the controller with this screw and let it just rest up against this cover cause it'll be, I said about the perfect thickness. And then I'm gonna have to just drill another hole over here to put a screw in. And then if I need to, I can still get this down. I can just pull the screw out. I can move the bracket back a little bit and this will still come down if I need to work underneath here for some reason. Also, if you notice the factory put these punch outs in here in this firewall insulation pad. So I'm gonna just punch one of those out or drill a hole, put a rubber grommet in there and then it will be good to go and look factory and it'll be fine. So do that and that's where I run all my wires, my brake line and everything will run through there. All right, now we got a nice clean hole. And uh, funny enough, there's already a couple indentions here on from the other side from the factory. Okay, so before we drill a hole, I want to figure out what size grommet that I'm gonna be using here. So I think in this size here, probably be a good size grommet because you're only gonna have two wires. I just, I just use this as a reference, but you're gonna have two wires in there, right? You have this one. And then you got this blue wire here that runs to the, the plug. So you got 
two wires are going to be that size there essentially and then you're going to have a brake line that has to go through and hook to the master cylinder so i always want to make sure i can you know be able to put a brake line through here you know i should be able to it'll be a tight fit but it should fit and then if i ever want to run anything else through here as you can see I still have enough room to run other wires as well if I want to. So I'm gonna use this size grommet here and I can always up upscale it to something like this if I want to. I was starting to use this one here, but, and really it's not that big a difference in the size of the hole. Uh, but I'd rather keep it as small as possible. A good way to figure out how big of a hole to drill for something like this is you wanna find a drill bit that'll fit inside this diameter and maybe go one size up because obviously it's got to be bigger for it to fit but if you find one this size and go one size up that should be a good reference to figure out what size hole you need to drill for this all right so just real quick before i put this in the truck and make it difficult to actually show you what these circuit breakers are these are like i said before this is a circuit breaker it's a resettable breaker and here's the information on it it's a 12 volt Y21, I'm not really sure what that is. Maybe it's the 21 second resettable breaker. I'm not sure on that. Maybe you can comment down below and tell me what the Y21 is. But it's a 12 volt, 20 amp. They're both the same. Or actually, this one says 12 volt, 30 amp here. But uh, so you got that. You want this jumper wire here because the power is going to come in. Hook it to the solenoid on the battery side. On one, on one side or the other, don't matter which one you hook it to, and then the jumper wire will feed uh, power to the other side. So, Now, this is a 30 amp fuse here. I'm going to hook my black charge wire that goes to the 7 pin plug to the 30 amp one, and I'm going to hook the, the red wire that goes to the brake controller on this 20 amp one. So that's the way I'm going to hook this up, and I just put me a bolt here in the center to connect these two, and I'm probably going to just place it in here or there's this indention in here, this bolt will sit in here and clear it and I can just screw it in like that and it'll look nice and neat. And I want to drill, but two holes in, so. I'll come back after I get this drilled into the truck. A quick little update of what I got done so far. I didn't record everything because there's no sense in boring you with this and it all comes down to preference as well as far as how to route the wires and where to mount the relays and all that. So. I ended up drilling this hole, putting the grommet in there. Those two wires go down and they run the full length all the way to the back of the truck. The black wire goes all the way to the back of the truck, but that red wire comes up, goes around, that black wire does too, and comes around here. And I got it around to throw my factory looms and stuff like that, like the factory would have had it, and come over here. And now we got the relays. So or the circuit breakers. So we got this, I got it all put in here the way I want it. Like I said, I got, this is the black wire that runs all the way to the back to the trailer plug. This red wire is the wire that's gonna hook to the positive side of the solenoid. See, there's the end of it right there. I haven't hooked it up yet cause I'm saving that for last before putting any power to it. I wanna make sure I got everything hooked up. But that's what that wire is for. And this red wire here it runs, that's the one that's running all the way around, and it runs to the brake controller inside the truck. It sends power to the brake controller. And I said the black wire here is the charging wire. It runs all the way to the back of the truck to for your 12 volt charging source. So this is mounted up, and I did, like I said, I put a bolt in here and put it in this divot so then it'll sit here and only had to drill two holes, mounted that up solid. So that's all good to go. And if we come inside the truck here, you see I got my controller mounted up i used this screw here and i was wrong about the gap it was closer this would flop around if i put the bracket underneath here so i put it between my cover and dash and screwed it up with that factory screw and then just ran a self tapper in this side here so it's all held up in place it's nice and tight not going anywhere and you see the wires coming out the back. I still got to hook the wires to the back of this as well. So that one's unhooked. This one's hooked up already, but this one I need to hook up and got my brake line hooked up in here. Now I'm gonna show you the brake line that I made. It comes out of that hole, it comes down. And I made this all by hand. You, 
you can't really buy a brake line for this. You have to make it yourself. So I had brake line. I just put a flare on it and uh, did this and got it put in here. I put a couple loops in here. And the reason for these loops is for one, it holds fluid in here so it don't just bleed down, but also it's for flex. So then it has like a, you know, it's almost like a, like a spring as vibrations and all. So it doesn't fatigue the lines. And I got an adapter that's gonna go in here. I gotta take this brake line here out. You screw the adapter in, you screw the line, your factory brake line into the adapter. And this will come up and screw into there just like that. And you always wanna hook that to your rear brakes and I'll show you how we're gonna hook that up. Now we got a double flare. So now we got to the part where now we get we need to wire this seven pin plug up. Here's these two wires that go. This is the charge wire and this is the trailer brake wire. We're gonna have to pull the seven pin plug out here, which is easy to do. I'll show you how to do all that. And we gotta wire that up to the plug itself and then reinstall it. So we're gonna go ahead and do this and then we can go ahead and finish buttoning up the other things up at the front of the truck. Okay, so we gotta pull this plug out. This insert comes out of here. And how it comes out is you have a screw right here. You gotta take that screw loose. There's also one on the opposite side. You pull both those screws out. You need to loosen these so then your wire loom on the back here will slide out. And then that insert will, will come straight out. All right, then this should just push out the front. Some cases might not have enough room. I need to take the bracket down to get some more slack in it to actually wire everything up. It's probably gonna go up to the door. Okay, so once we got it pulled off, we should be able to just slide this out of here. Like so. And we have to add our wire. So you got to look at how it goes into the truck. And if you're looking at the plug, right? Let me let me put it back in here so you can see. So if you're looking at the plug from like looking at it like this, this tab here would be your charge wire, and this bottom tang here would be your trailer brake wire. So that's the two that you're going to utilize to hook this system up. So we got to pull this out. And so it's going to be the one up here because it sits in the truck like this. So it'll be this one here and then this one here that we're going to utilize. Charge wire, trailer brake wire. So we're going to get our wires fed to the back of our case here. I like just push it on up and then I'll let it sit there so it'll hold the wires for me. I'll hook the trailer brick wire up first since it's a smaller wire easier to deal with. Tighten the screw back down. 
And you want it good and snug, but don't strip it out because it's just brass contacts. So be careful, but you do want it snug. You don't want them coming loose. You want it good and tight. And also, I like to go through here and I just check all my wires, honestly, while I'm already in here. They usually stay tight, but I like to check all mine as I go. Now we got to hook this one up to right here because that would be our charge wire. All right, there we go. So, and once again, when you're looking at the plug, charge wire, so big 12 volt charge wire, blue trailer brake wire. That's the way that goes together, just like that. And I'll put a diagram in the video to show you how to wire one of these up completely so you'll know. And now we can put this back together. The same thing as before in reverse. So this thing won't go in but one way. Sometimes you gotta play with it a little bit to get it to line up properly. But once it lines up, it'll be there. And you'll know because your screw holes will line up. All right, so now I'm just gonna show you how I routed the wires. I showed you how I routed those wires around. I'm gonna show you how I routed them underneath the truck and along the frame rail. Like I said, you can see how that wire, there's two wires. You got that big black wire that's right over here, then a blue wire that's coming out of the firewall. They both go down and they go straight back to the back of the truck. So they go down the firewall there into a factory wire loom and into a clip and then along down inside the frame rail. So let's go underneath the truck and take a look at how that's done. Okay, so if you look under here, it's kind of hard to see where those wires are coming down, but they come down the firewall there, and I run them along the frame rail here. You can see them right there. I put them in that factory speedometer clip. Come down. Ran them into that factory wire loom down the frame rail into another wire loom. And just kept on running it down and running it down all the way until I got all the way to the back. You can see how I just kept it along with the factory forward wiring harness kind of. Kept it to the flow until I got here because the factory harness kind of curls out right here. But I kept it right along there, running along the frame rail. And into the back right there, that hole. And it comes along up in here, up inside the gas, not inside the gas tank, but up along that wire harness you see there above the gas tank. Comes through, and you can kind of see it right there where it goes to the hole. And it comes out right up here. It comes out, and got it wrapped in there. And then it just shoots right into the seven pin plug. Okay, so coming back over here to the circuit breakers real quick, I wanted to explain something. You don't have to have two circuit breakers to install actual trailer brakes on the vehicle. The only reason I have two is because you need one for the trailer brake controller, you need one for your charge wire. You don't have to run a charge wire all the way to the seven pin plug. I did that just so then anytime I pull a trailer that has a winch or anything with a battery attached to the trailer, it will maintain the battery on the trailer and I'll have power back there anytime I need it. If you want just trailer brakes without the charging wire, then you can install one circuit breaker, run your trailer brake controller to it, which this is the 20 amp one. That's all you need. It's just one circuit breaker, run your brake controller to it, and then that's it. And then you don't have to worry about running this wire or having another circuit breaker, you just have the one. But I wanted both. I wanted the charge wire, so that's why I have two. I just want to clarify that real quick to let you know you don't have to run a charge wire if you don't want to. But it's always better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it in my thought process. So there, I have it now. If I ever need it, it's there, so I don't have to worry about it. And also, since I didn't clarify on all the wiring earlier, 10 gauge wire for your charge wire going with the back of the seven pin plug, and then 12 gauge wire for all other wires going with the brake controller and all. Like this red wire here, that's a 12 gauge wire. 
and it, inside the truck hooked to the brake controller is 12 gauge wire. Okay, so we got the block installed for the trailer brakes and you can see here, all it is, you take your brake line out of your master cylinder, rear brakes again, always hook it to the rear brakes, not the front, because then your trailer will lock up on you if you hook it to the front, because most of your stopping's on your front brakes, which is the back bowl. So hook it to your rear brakes, you hook your brake line into the block, and then your trailer brake line hooks into that same block. So that's how that goes together. Real, real quick, real simple, nothing to it. Then of course you gotta go inside and bleed the brakes as well. Now, funny enough, I was actually gonna show me installing this block and going through the process, bleeding the brakes and all that. But uh, as, as it came to be, I actually had to use this truck when I, I had to use it the other day to, to pull a car trailer to bring my buddy's truck over here, do some work on it. So I kind of had to go ahead and install it really quick so I'd have them to use. I didn't really have time to wait to record it, unfortunately, but it's real quick, real simple. There's nothing to it. You know, if you're gonna hook a brake line, you can hook this up, it's no problem, you know? So let's go take a look inside the truck and I'll show you underneath the dash. Okay, so from in here, you come underneath and I already showed you how I hooked this up. You got the brake line here and what you got to do is what i did because this truck has power brakes i started the truck up i put me a line wrench on the line coming in and i hand pumped the brake pedal i hand pump it hold it just like you would bleeding any other brake like when you bleed your brakes regularly on your truck pump it hold it crack the line loose and you'll and i put a rag down here so i didn't get brake fluid on my mat or my carpet Break the line loose and you'll hear the air start to be forced out and the brake pedal will start to go down. And then you close the line, you pump this up. While you're holding this, close that brake line so you don't suck air back into it. Pump the brake pedal up again, hold it just like, like, like again, like you would any other time bleeding brakes. Crack the line until you get nothing but fluid coming out. And then once you have that, you're good to go. And with everything hooked up, this is how it actually So when you hit the brake pedal, you know, you see how that thing moves? and the harder you hit the brake pedal the further over this right here will go and that's just activating the trailer brakes simultaneously with the brakes of the truck now real quick for those of y'all that might not know how these brake controllers work right maybe you've never used them before but you're curious about it obviously this moves over that tells you that they're working the red light comes on that tells you that you have power but let's say you want to adjust the tension on your trailer brakes, right? You want to adjust how fast or how hard the trailer stops. Well, this knob actually turns. So all this, all the way to the right is max power. So that's your most stopping power. It, the trailer brakes will grab the hardest on this setting. If you turn it to the left, the further left you turn it, the lighter they are, the less they will grab. So for my trailer or the trailer that I used, I guess, I don't know if the trailer brakes need to be adjusted but I had it turned all the way up to get the most out of it, which pulling a car is heavier. So you probably need more tension for that, but another trailer with trailer brakes, like a utility trailer, you might not need quite so much. So you can adjust it to fine tune it and get where you need it. So that's how that works. And then also you can manually actuate it, obviously. You don't have to hit the brake to activate the trailer brakes. You can reach down here while you're driving. Let's say you're going down a hill, your trailer starts swaying or something. You can reach down and start activating the trailer brakes and it'll, instead of it swaying, it'll smooth and straighten back out. So that's how that works. Quick little rundown on that. Easy, you know, and uh, I love these old units. They're very cool. All righty, guys. Well, that's it. We got that trailer brake controller installed and I love it. I think it turned out great. Now, I do want to give a shout out to my buddy, Jesse at Six Speed Media for giving me that block. That block that I showed you that goes on the master cylinder. The block I had, it just would not go. It was too big. I had it on my 71, but they had a different configuration. The big line is up front on those and the small lines at the back. So that's why, and I didn't have a fitting. He had it on his truck, but he wanted to eliminate the trailer brakes on his truck. So he was nice enough to give me the block. So it worked out. Um, but that's it. It's, it's really a simple install. It's, there's nothing to it. It's real easy. You know, um, it takes a little bit of time, you know, but the wires are labeled and once you you see how easy I wired it up. You, know, you get some circuit breakers, you wire it up. The most con time consuming part, honestly, is running the wires and getting everything nice and neat. At least it is for me. Some people don't, they're not as picky as I am. I like to have my wires nice and neat so they look factory where you can't really tell that anything's been added. So, but uh, other than that, I mean, it's simple install. It's easy, you know, there's nothing to it and it works great. So 
If uh, you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the drop box down below, and I'll get back to you as always. And I appreciate you all for watching. So that's all there is for this one. So until next time, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.